In today's video, I'm going to explain what the Overlay Blend Mode is and share some ways to use it. Because the Overlay Blend Mode is so powerful and useful, you'll find it in lots of photo editing software. I'll be using both Affinity Photo and Photoshop throughout this video. Be sure to watch both, as I'll show slightly different techniques with each, which you can use with the other. We're starting with a simple example of using the Overlay Blend Mode to dodge and burn. Here's the image open in Photoshop, and I'm going to add a new empty layer from the Layers menu. Then in the dialog, I can set the Blend Mode drop-down to Overlay. When I set this, there's an option that becomes available at the bottom. I can use this to fill the new layer with a neutral colour. I want you to remember this because I'll be explaining why the neutral colour is important later. After selecting the option, I can click the OK button to add the new layer. Notice the new layer at the top of the image has its blend mode set to overlay. If I change the blend mode to normal, you can see that the layer is filled with grey. You just can't see the grey when the mode is set to overlay. Let's paint on the layer now using black paint. Notice that where I'm painting, the image becomes darker. Then, if I switch to white by pressing X on my keyboard, it becomes lighter where I paint. Let's quickly look at doing the same thing now in Affinity Photo before I explain what's happening. As before, I'll add a new layer from the Layers menu. I'll then set the Blend Mode to Overlay in the Layers Studio panel. This time, I'm not even going to bother filling the layer with mid-tone grey. I'll just paint onto it using black to darken the area of the image. When I switch to painting with white by pressing X, you can see that it lightens the area. Now, let's look at what's happening before I show you another example of how you can use the Overlay Blend Mode. I've prepared a series of swatches filled with different levels of white. On the left is black, which is 0% white. Then we have a dark grey, which is 25% white, mid-tone grey, which is 50% white, a light grey, which is 75% white, and then, obviously, white, which is 100% white. All the swatches are on a transparent background so that the background doesn't interfere with what I'm going to show you. First, I'll select the bottom set of swatches and set their layer blend mode to overlay. In a moment, I'm going to move each swatch over the one above it. But first, I want you to take a guess at what's going to happen when I do that. Pause the video for a moment and try to work out using what you saw happen with the dodge and burn example. Let's start with the black square, which doesn't have any effect. Now let's try the white, and that doesn't have any effect either. What about mid-tone grey? Well, that doesn't have any effect. But look at what happens with the other two grey squares. The dark grey square creates a darker grey, whilst the light grey square creates a lighter grey. This is because the overlay blend mode is what we call a contrast-based mode. If something is darker than a mid-tone grey, it makes it darker. But if it's lighter than mid-tone grey, it makes it lighter. It's only if something is a mid-tone grey that it doesn't have any effect. Because of that, it's called the neutral colour. That's why when I filled the layer with a mid-tone grey colour in Photoshop example, we couldn't see it. And the reason we don't see the changes to the black square is because we can't make something darker than black. Equally, white is already at its maximum value, so we can't make it whiter. Then, if I move the mid-tone square over any of the others, it doesn't have any effect, because it's the neutral colour. Let's look at another way to use this information, starting with Photoshop. This time, I'm going to duplicate the image onto a new layer. I'll then change the blend mode at the top of the layers window to be Overlay. Notice this immediately increases the contrast and saturation in the image. You can see what's happening in the histogram when I turn the layer off and on. The light tones in the histogram get lighter, and the dark tones get darker, making the histogram extend out towards the ends. What's happening is that the pixels on the two layers are blending to produce a darker or lighter tone, just like in the example with the squares. If we don't want the effect to be as strong, we can reduce the layer opacity. I can also use the blend if controls on the layer to prevent it from making, say, the light tones too light. Now let's look at the same thing in Affinity Photo, but with a different twist. This time, rather than duplicating the image layer, I'm going to add a Curves Adjustment layer. But you can also do the same thing using a Levels Adjustment layer. Then I'll change the Blend Mode drop-down to be Overlay rather than Normal. 
Notice how this produces the contrast adjustment, even without me making any changes to the curves line. It's just like blending a copy of the image with itself. And as we did with the Photoshop example, I can reduce the opacity to control the strength of the effect. Then, instead of the blend if control to remove the effect from the highlights, I can click the cog icon to open the blend ranges dialog. All I need to do is move the white range down to the bottom for the source layer. I'm sure that it hasn't escaped your attention that I've been using blend if in Photoshop and blend ranges in Affinity Photo. These are both extremely powerful tools, so if you want to know more, watch this video next. It shares powerful examples whilst explaining how the controls work. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching today, and I hope to see you again soon for another video.